Hi. Now, this is another tutorial in my series on work done by a force. In an earlier tutorial, we looked at work done by forces acting on a particle that was moving horizontally. But now we're going to look at the work done by forces when you've got a particle moving in the vertical sense. And just as a quick reminder, we talked about this before, that work done by a force was always equal to the force times the distance moved by the point of application of the force in the direction of the force. So what we've got here is an example where we've got a load of bricks, which we're going to treat as a particle, with a mass of 35 kilograms. And it's raised 8 meters by a cable attached to the load. And assuming that the cable is vertical and the bricks are raised at a constant speed, we've got to find the work done by the tension in the cable and the work done against gravity. So, first of all then, let's put some more symbols on this diagram. Now we know this is going up at a constant speed, so the acceleration A would be equal to zero, zero meters per second per second. We also ought to put some forces on here. Well the bricks have got a weight and that weight will act downwards and will be equal to mg, the mass times the acceleration due to gravity. So the mass is 35 and we've got g there acceleration due to gravity. We've also got the tension in the cable so that's going to act upwards so that would be T newtons and we're thinking of this as a particle. Now in order to get the work done by the tension in the cable T newtons it will be the force of T newtons times the distance it moved which was 8 meters. So we can just write that down here that the work done okay, by the tension is going to equal T, the force, times 8. In other words, 8T. The problem is we don't have T. We could have just seen that coming, to be honest. But we can find out t very easily because we know it's going at a constant speed. So if we were to resolve upwards, then t minus 35g, the resultant force upwards, must be equal to zero because it's going at a constant speed. And so if we rearrange this, you can see that therefore t is equal to 35g. So, if we were to put that value into here, we've got 35 then times g, g being 9.8, if we take it as that value, and then times the 8. And if you do that, you'll find that you get 2,744 joules. This is up into the thousands and quite a big number. And so what we can do is change this to something called kilojoules. A thousand joules are a kilojoule. So this would be exactly the same then as 2.744 kilojoules, kj. Okay, well that's the work done by the tension. Now we've got this thing here. We've got to calculate the work done against gravity. Now, when we talk about the work done against gravity, we're looking at the work done by the weight here. So let's just write this down, the work done against gravity. Well, we can see that the weight, 35g, was also raised 8 meters. So the work done against gravity, 35g, times 8, is exactly the same result as we had up here. 2,744 joules or 2.744 kilojoules. Now this idea, work done against gravity, is something we're going to look at later on. It's actually called potential energy 
But as I say, I'll go into that in more detail later on. But essentially, it is the weight, or mg, times the height that it is raised. And so it would be, in general, mg times h, a quantity called potential energy. OK, anyway, we'll look at that later on. But hopefully this gives you an idea of how you can handle work done by a force when it's moving in the vertical sense.